folks, welcome back to another video where you get to hear me ramble on about some of the most interesting subjects out there. In the first segment, you got to hear me ramble on about cryptids. Well, in this video, we'll be switching gears and I'll be talking about UFOs. Now this is one of those hot button subjects I could ramble on about forever, but I'm going to narrow it down and talk about my own experiences compared to that of what Aunt Sally saw back in the 50s. Secondhand stories are a sure way to dull the hell out of any discussion, which is why I choose to only share my own. And yes, I've experienced some odd sightings over the years. But before I tell you about them, I'm gonna lay it down and say that there are unidentified flying objects out there being witnessed by many folks, myself included. There is no doubt in my mind they're a part of this reality, but the real question is, what exactly are they? Well. I believe the answer is closer to home than most folks realize. If we knew the kinds of things technology is capable of, it would blow your minds. Our military alone is always experimenting with it, creating new, sophisticated technological advances the general public just isn't aware of. In 2020 alone, the Department of Defense budget was approximately $721 billion, with a good portion of it being spent on secret discretionary projects. So you can imagine the kinds of things those science geeks can conjure up in that lab. There are teams of folks who work 24-7 around the clock whose sole purpose is to create secret technology. You see, it's all about being on top and one step ahead of the other guy. Those strange sightings we're witnessing is most likely a product of our own technology. But of course, there's always that possibility it's something else. But if that's the case, who are they? Where are they from and what do they want? Are they interplanetary drones being sent to observe their celestial neighbors? Are they a lost or ancient civilization that lives in the ocean, occasionally surfacing for whatever reasons? Could they be the gods our ancestors spoke of and depicted in artwork in old dwellings? Could they be creatures from another planet? Or how about this one? Could they be our own creators, watching over and observing us? Are we the science experiment? These are all some intriguing and thought-provoking theories, and each one has its own fan base. So what do I believe? I believe what I can prove, not what I can't. So let me tell you about my own experiences. When I was a youngin, around 10 or so, I was lying in the back of my pop's truck as we were heading up the mountain on a dirt road. It was a warm summer night, and I can still remember just how clear the night sky was. My buddy also happened to be in the back of the truck as well, and as we continued to watch the sky, we both saw a set of red lights darting across the stars in a triangular formation. It probably only took them two seconds to move from one end of the sky to the other before disappearing altogether into the horizon. Clear as day, three distinct red lights moving perfectly in sync with one another, which to me was almost like looking at the bottom of a spacecraft of some kind. My buddy and I still talk about it today. My next UFO experience was in the parking lot of a general store in Texas. I had just finished grocery shopping one night 
and was making my way back to the truck. Before I could even unload the heavy bags, movement caught my attention about 45 degrees in the eastern part of the skyline, and there I saw what looked like some kind of sky operation. A large orange glowing light appeared to be dropping some kind of slow moving liquid down onto the other smaller orange light below it. To be honest, it was like looking at a giant colon punctuation dropping molten lava onto the other. Quite a strange display to say the least. As I continued to watch the peculiar set, which lasted for more than a couple minutes, others began doing the same. About 15 to 20 folks also saw it, each one scratching their heads in confusion. The next experience occurred while I was hiking inside the Rockies just a few years ago. I was halfway through the Bear Lake Trail when I saw a buck galloping through the trees with a large, somewhat translucent and wide orb following closely behind it. This must have occurred about 30 or 40 yards off the trail, but I still had a good look at it. That was probably the strangest sight I had seen yet, other than the deer I found wearing a sweater out in the middle of the wilderness. I'll go ahead and attach it to the end of this video. I know a lot of folks have these odd UFO sightings, and often question whether they'd seen it at all, or was it just a product of their imagination. But if you're lucky enough to share these encounters with others, you'll know that you're not crazy after all, and that many people do see them. I'm just glad others saw what I saw, as it adds another layer of confirmation to the experience. Now, I've seen all kinds of other things up there in that sky, and even out in the wilderness, but I felt like these were the ones worth sharing with you. So yes, I believe there's something interesting going on up there in that sky. Just not sure what that something is. Well, I think I've rambled on enough for now, so I'll let you take it from here. I'd like to hear your thoughts and experiences on the subject in the comments section below, and you can bet that I'll be reading them. Thank you for joining me on this segment. And you'll hear from you soon. Stay tuned for the deer story. In the summer of 2014, I was visiting a buddy of mine and his family, and I was partaking in an outdoor activity called geocaching. If you folks aren't familiar with this activity, that's alright. I was a little lost to myself until my buddy walked me through it. To simplify things, it's a recreational activity of either hiding or finding a hidden object by means of GPS coordinates posted online. Usually, folks gather some objects into a weatherproof container and stash it somewhere out of sight from public so that only folks with coordinates can locate it. These containers are called caches and each one usually contains a log where you can write down your experience or any other information you might have about that location or the trip out there. After doing this a few times, I can see why so many people enjoy doing it. If nothing else, it's a fine reason to step out into Mother Nature and get a little fresh air. At the time I had this experience, it was only my second time out there on one of these searches. We were in a patch of woods owned by the state, just outside of a nearby town where my buddy had lived, and I had been staying with him for a couple days. My buddy Joe and his wife have two kids, an eight-year-old son and a ten-year-old daughter. The first day I stayed with them, we went out and searched for a few of these caches. By the way, if you ever want to look them up, you just spell them C-A-C-H-E-S. We found two of them, but not the third one. The kids were pretty persistent about finding it, so the next day we went out to try to find it. It was during that hike that something really strange happened to us. 
Joe lives in a small town surrounded by dense ponderosa pine and Douglas fir trees in northeast Colorado. It's not a national park per se, but instead a large patch of forest managed by the Bureau of Land Management and has a nature trail that cuts directly through the center of it. It was only about a 2.5 mile hike to the spot where the catch was hidden and a pretty easy going hike for us overall. About two miles in, Joe's son tells us that he could see someone walking their dog just slightly off the trail and parallel to us. When I looked off to the right where he was pointing, I saw what he was seeing, but it wasn't a man or a dog. However, it was wearing something red, and the way it moved made it hard to decipher at first. And when it cleared the wood line and stumbled into a nearby meadow, we could all see it clear as day, and there was no mistaking what it was. It was a medium-sized fawn, and she was stumbling around like she was disoriented. But what really threw us off was that the deer was wearing a bright red sweater. I know, this is where I lose people, which is why I decided not to share the story for the longest time. But there we were staring at a distraught creature of the forest that happened to be wearing an article of clothing. Well, she gave us a nice 15 to 20 second window to look at her before disappearing back into those woods. Needless to say, you can imagine the conversation we had at dinner that night. For all I know, this could have been some sick joke played by someone with too much time on their hands. But that would involve actually capturing the deer, subduing it, and dressing it up. Quite a monumental effort if you ask me. Then again I've never tried to catch a deer and put a sweater on it. You gotta remember where we were, out in the middle of dense forest, and in a protected area. How and why that deer ended up the way it did will always bother me. I want to know if anyone else out there had a similar experience. If so, I'd like to hear from you. Anyway, like I said, you can expect some new material soon, and thank you all for being so patient with me. Be safe out there, and enjoy the summer season. You'll hear from me soon.